Hey everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here. Welcome to Expansion, a podcast on personal professional development here at EXP Realty. And today I'm super excited to be talking to Ricky Carruth, a two-time icon agent from Gulf Shores, Alabama. Welcome, Ricky. Hey, Glenn. How you doing, big guy? Good, good, good. Yeah. You, um, well, uh, normally, um, you know, when hurricanes come <laughs> yeah. through, it kind of hits you guys. But uh, yeah. this time, uh, went, it took a took a turn through Florida. Uh, but uh, uh, how are you guys? Uh, how's 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 the world down there? How's your guys' weather? Any anything crazy? Really good, man. Um, yeah, that, it's that storm could have hit us just as easy. Um, I, I was, saw it coming up and I thought that could very easily hit us and it's going to be a bad one. So we get hit by a, a big storm like that, maybe once every eight to 10 years. So I know exactly what they're going through down there. Um, and I just feel so bad about, you know, how, how what, what's going on as far as our area, we had about 20 mile an hour winds. <laughs> we were, the sun was out and, and we didn't get any rain. So we, we really, um, dodged a bullet there but no er everything's good in our world and um you know lovely so awesome well great great to hear and uh obviously we're we're doing some stuff with extend a hand to really uh, add a lot of focus to help our uh, agents out in florida that uh, that got hit uh but onto the podcast here um you you've been in the business uh 20 years you and i i think first met if i'm not mistaken it was at the nasdaq uh, event in New York, uh, probably what three three or so years ago, maybe 2019. Does that sound about 2020, right? 2020. 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so ja was it was January then 2020. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So and then and then you uh, you made the the move over uh, shortly after that, but you've got a very unique style of one how you build your business, but then you've also build a you've got a a unique coaching business that uh, helps agents succeed. So, um, you know, I'm curious, what did you do before real estate? Mm, yeah, that is a good question. So I grew up roofing houses. <laughs> My dad was okay. a roofer. He, he owned a roofing business and uh Carruth roofing actually. And he owned that business for maybe 30 plus years. He was actually on the roof, um, with the crews, uh, laying shingles, laying metal, doing tar, doing flat roofs, um, deck or everything else. And so when I was about 12, well, before then I was, uh, I was like eight or nine years old. He had us cleaning up job sites. Me and my brother, we were cleaning up, you know, the grounds. And, uh, by the time I was maybe 13, I was laying shingles, <laughs> you know? So, um, that's kind of the environment I grew up in and, you know, thank God for it because, uh, growing up in that really hardcore blue collar environment, uh, where my dad still owned the business. So it's like, I, I saw it from both sides as far as, you know, hard work and running a business. My mom owned a hair salon. And so, um, she owned her own business and she cut the hair. So it's like, I, I got to see my parents both work really hard to build businesses that they owned. And so that's a really unique situation I was brought up in. It was tough and, uh, they were hard on us, but, um, uh, for good reason, you know, they, they had the best intentions and, um, honestly, uh, you know, by the time I got, uh, I graduated high school, had a, had a football scholarship to Missouri Valley and didn't know what I was going to do. And, uh, you know, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. Dad wanted me to be a lawyer. But um, at the end of the day, um, I failed a history class at University of Alabama. It was four different colleges in two years. And I decided I'm going to try to get my real estate license since it was just one class. And honestly, I didn't know if I wanted to do it or not. You know, I finished the class and I realized, <laughs> I, I, like I thought, when you got your real estate license, they put it on your driver's license or something and it's just there for life and you can go sell houses and you know, that's it. I didn't realize continuing ed and fees and all this other stuff and commitment, you know, you have to go find a broker. Well, you got to take the test in a year, find a broker in 90 days, da, 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 da. I was like, this is too much commitment for me right now. I don't know what I want to do with my life. So I came back from Alabama, hopped up back on the roof for three days and, um, <laughs> I'm going to go take that real estate test and see if I can't make a career out of this. So um, that's kind of how it all went down. But I, I concierge at a hotel, cooked pizzas. I was a, uh, a head grill cook in a seafood restaurant, served tables, uh, painted houses, framed houses, landscaping. Um, probably did a little bit of everything before I got into real estate. Now, now it's, it's you know kind of surprising in some respects because you seem like a very disciplined guy. Um 
at least uh, from you know the last few years, it seems like you've got a very structured way of approaching things. Mm-hmm. Um, was that did that happen at a particular point in time? Was there a decision that got made, or or were you always disciplined? It just had, didn't, hadn't shown up yet. Uh, as far as being committed, the commitment yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. The the thing was is um, no, I'm all in on whatever I do, a hundred percent, a hundred million percent, and I was I've always been very structured and disciplined, um, and so that's why I hesitated on um, real estate um, there at the very beginning because I knew that if I, once I committed, that was it. And I was so early in my life that I wanted to make sure I was making the best decision possible before I committed because once I commit, it's over. So that's all the hesitation was, was to make sure that I felt like it was going to be what I wanted to go all in on because whatever I was going to do, I was going to go all in. So, but when, once I made the decision, it was over. Um, you know, I went all in and, you know, the rest is history. So um, I, I've always been really good at math, not in terms of like uh, the very high levels of algebra and stuff like that, but more of commonsensical, um, above average, you know, basic math. Um, really good at. I can just visualize things. I could kind of put two and two together. And so it helps me um, understand, um, you know, in, in terms of what I'm doing today, how that can multiply into really massive things over time. Um, and so I, I've always been a very big visionary. You know, my mom, she was a big dreamer, right? And so big dreamers always, you know, they, they think that one idea is going to put them over the top. Right. My dad's always been a conservative, hard worker that's scared to dream big because he thinks he's going to lose everything he worked hard for. So, so, again, I got best of both worlds, big dreamer, visionary and hard work to go behind the big dream. You know, I didn't realize all this growing up, but I was kind of born into this environment that was very conducive for, you know, to put me in the position that I am now, which is, you know, lofty dreams, but willing to put in the work over time and put those daily habits in place. Awesome. So now you you've been a very productive agent. I think you're it, you you it, you're a solo agent if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, you've uh, continued to be in in production, um, and you've also built a fairly good sized uh, um, rev share organization as well. Um, how you? Uh, I've got a question here that was actually put on my my sheet here, which was. How has EXP allowed you to step away from production to travel, speak, and coach? And I, if I'm not, if I'm reading it right, you're still producing. Well, uh, not really. Um, I kind of stepped away. Um, I'm still doing some parts of the business, but honestly, my dad, you know, he's he's in the business now. I got him off of the roof after I was in the business for maybe three or four years, and yeah, one of the hardest things I ever had to do, you know, showing him how to do an email and stuff like that. But um, that was 20 years ago. He, he runs all the sales at this point. Um, and so we have a deal worked out there where I can step back and help build him, his and I's, um, both of our organization. Um, and so man, thank God for EXP because after 20 years, I did a hundred deals a year for eight years in a row, uh, as a single agent with one assistant last year was the, the eighth year that I did that. And, uh, honestly, I was really burnt out on it as much as I loved it. I was getting to where I was kind of cringing every time a, <laughs> a seller or a client would would call me, and that's not really a good sign. And I had all these other things going on, speaking, writing, coaching, um, other businesses and things of that nature. And I just got to the point where um, I needed to focus on these other things. And, um, you know, was I making enough without EXP to step out of production? Yeah, but not as comfortably. Right. And that rev share created that cushion that put me over the top where I was more than comfortable with stepping out of production the way that I have um, and uh, and able to really focus on the things that, that I really enjoy. See, every step of the way, you'll reach this plateau where you may feel, you know, either burn out or you don't love it anymore or whatever the case may be. So many agents tell me, oh, I love sales. I'm going to do it forever. You know, yeah, you will until you don't. And, and you're going to reach this place where you become bored. And that's where I was, you know, bored. And that's why I started coaching and writing and speaking. But that was in 2017. I was still with Remax. And, um, you know, no EXP wasn't even on my radar at that point. In fact, I think you were uh, you were negative on EXP, at least I think in one of those old YouTube videos, if I, if I remember right. 
Kind of, but more so of a, it doesn't matter where you're at. Um, it was, was more the message, but yeah, mm -hmm. because the, the classic early days of EXP, um, recruit breath agents, right. Which you don't really see that a whole lot anymore. It's still there, but not like it was, uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had to wrap my head around the entire, um, um, you know, philosophy, which is it's a platform you use to build your company. And so within building your company, you've got direct influence over your organization and how they operate, how they uh, interact, how they try to attract and so on and so forth. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's, um, it, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I see it is the, are these different groups. It's, it's almost equivalent to different brokerages within the mothership. Um, whereas now you're susceptible to their, uh, their stuff, their infrastructure, their, you know, coaching, training, so forth that they provide on top of the infrastructure EXP has in place. Whereas if there's a group out there that, you know, doesn't really recruit the way that you feel like is, you know, best or, you know, gives the best impression, stuff like that, that doesn't have anything to do with you. You can build your organization and influence your agents you know, to, to go out and attract and sell and build their businesses, you know, you can try to uh, rub off on them however you feel. Um, but yeah, you know, it was funny in the NASDAQ when we met, um, we sat down because I had 25,000 agents in my organization in my coaching program. And you guys had 25,000 agents in your organization at the time with the XP. And, and, and that was really cool. And I remember you sitting down and taking a lot of time with me, never tried to recruit me at all. Uh, whatsoever. And, and the, the feeling I got was that EXP was a company that cares about agents uh, a whole lot and uh, much more than anything I've ever seen. And, and at that point, I still wasn't interested, but, um, but it came to the point where I was going to leave where I was. And then I took a really hard look and realized, wow, you know, this is a platform that you can really take and you can really uh, build something significant. And so I think a lot of people that come over, it's, it comes down to timing, you know? Um, yeah, it just wasn't, and, and it wasn't about EXP. I got to come to EXP. It was about, it's time to move on from where I am. You know, what's my best options, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's been my, my MO has always been, um, you know, really just meet some people where they're at. And then, I, what I what I typically will do is then look at it just internally. Do we do we solve that for this we'll call it this persona of an agent? And and if not, what can we go do in the background so that we can sort of address that need? Um, you know, in, in going forward. So uh, I I I tend to just be honest up front. And if you know, for a while we didn't we didn't we we weren't a good brokerage for for brand new agents. Um, now we've got a pretty robust you know, training program. We've got some inter programs. Obviously, you've got you know, programs um, provided by agents like yours um, that, that are out there that are that are helping agents succeed um, even from the very beginning. But in the early days, if you were a new agent, I would say, "Hey, love your enthusiasm, love your passion, but we're not the right place for you." So I think just meeting people where they're at just makes makes a ton of sense. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so you you've been uh, obviously uh, building a, a good size uh, organization. I think you you've attracted um, some of the the largest. I don't know how many people you how many people do you have front line to you in the EXP? Like 150, 150, something okay. like that. Pretty cool. So um, so what was what was your secret to attracting all of those um, those folks into to EXP? Man, everybody has their own thing. I think everybody has to try to figure out what their what their there's so many different ways to do it. And I mm -hmm. think everyone has to try to figure out what their what their thing is. How do they start the conversations and and really come in contact? I mean, social media is the way. Um, you know, but it, it all has to lead back to real conversation. Same as property owners. You know, you can do all the social media you want, but if you're not funneling to real conversations to try to figure out what's going on with them. Um, you know, what we can do to help them, what they're looking to accomplish, so on and so forth, then we're not going to get anywhere with anyone, property owners, real estate agents, or anyone uh, under the sun. So um, the biggest thing for me was through my coaching program, just providing so much value and building those relationships and building that brand. 
and then a, being able to parlay off of everything that I've done. I mean, I've, I've got agents who, I mean, there's thousands of agents who said they wouldn't even be in the business anymore if it wasn't for zero to diamond. Um, you know, so the, 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 my name goes a long way. So that's kind of how I did it. Um, but, uh, honestly you can piggyback off someone like me. You can, uh, find, uh, someone in your, in your organization upline who has done something similar. I mean, the, the, the Rickies are everywhere with an EXP, um, that, that have created influence or, or learned the system or how to's. Um, and so that's how I attract it personally, as far as my downline and trying to help those guys, um, bring agents in. I've recently started doing a, a call every week, you know, presenting and where I'm presenting, you know, the company and our organization and all the benefits and how great everything is. Um, and that's been working really well. Um, you know, so there's a lot of ways to do it, but it all has to be value driven today. There's too much, too many people just trying to, you know, sell you a product or sell you a coaching program or, um, upsell you and, and stuff like that. And, um, if you can be a little different in terms of really trying to create that relationship, that's my take. I mean, the other side of it is, is come right out and say EXP and, and see if they're interested. And that way you're not tricking them into a relationship with something that you want on the back end. But I don't really believe that either, because when I do ask them about their brokerage and EXP and stuff like that, that's not the reason why I'm in the relationship with them. I coach a lot of agents for free that are not within EXP. Um, so it, it, to me, I'm trying to better the entire industry, um, not just EXP, not just, you know, a certain brokerage or a certain group, but anyone that needs help. And we do, we do free one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got uh, certified coaches in my program. We do free one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. I've got 20 certified zero to diamond coaches. We coach agents, you know, from any brokerage. So we're just trying to do good work into the, into the industry. And we feel like the ripple effects of what we're doing is really going to, um, create some massive impact, not, not just now, but further down the road. Well, awesome. And, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, you have a pretty unique, uh, program. How do you, um, how do you decide, uh, which, which agents to coach? Uh, I think you've got some hoops you have them jump through as well as probably some other processes. So we have, uh, we do it every quarter. So I've got a 60 day challenge. And so we coach them through the 60 days. So it's just a 60 day one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, program. Then we take a month off to recalibrate and regroup. And then, so every quarter we kick off a new group that we're coaching one-on-one -on -one through the program. So every quarter we'll have about a thousand or 2000, somewhere in there applicants that want it, but we can only take on about a hundred. And so it's really kind of random. Honestly, we just, i um, literally don't know who the agents are. I'm just picking them off the list and, um, connecting them with, you know, one of our coaches and the coaches, you know, we have a, uh, a playbook of how the whole process works from start to finish intro calls and, you know, every week of the 60 days. So they kind of take it and run with it from there, but it's really kind of random. Honestly, there's a lot of demand, you know, but we can only handle right. so many. Oh, awesome. So, um, so what, uh, what adjustments have you made, um, to your career? I think you mentioned maybe getting out of production, getting on the road a bit more, but are there, are there some things that you've done that have helped you be more successful? Mm, I mean, you're, it's always a work in progress. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're always tweaking. I mean, I'm, I'm tweaking my morning routine all the time. I mean, yeah, it's like, I want to make a video and say, here's my morning routine, but next week or two weeks from now, it'll be different, you know, uh, right. workout routines, diet. I mean, it's, it's, it's always changing. And so I, I think that's the name of the game is to, uh, to understand that the, that the things that make people successful, these, these huge success stories, they didn't do anything, you know, crazy. Um, it was really small things that were really easy to do, but really easy not to do, you mm -hmm. know, um, that, that got them where they were. It's just over time. Um, and so I've just always got the bigger picture in mind, three to five to 10 years down the road. And so every little thing I do, um, I'm thinking about how does this affect me in five years? Um, you know, how is this helping the, the, the bigger mission and the bigger vision, uh, and everything. Um, but I, I gotta say, I mean, one thing I've been doing here lately, uh, for the past couple of weeks is drinking a gallon of water every day. And, and I gotta tell you that, um, I feel happier. I feel more satisfied. I feel, I don't feel so anxious. Um, uh, I feel like, 
I'm feel, I feel like my workouts are, um, more, um, productive. Um, you know, I have more energy. Uh, it's, it's been really a, a life changing because I've, I'm, I have so much going on. I'm, 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 I can stay in this state of, Oh God, what am I, you know, forgetting? And, you know, uh, am I doing everything and I'm behind and I want to do this project and that project and I can't ever get to the end of it. Dehydration. I'm telling you, um, I think plays into a lot of people's, what they think is mental health issues. Um, of course there's people with serious mental health issues, but I think there's a, there's a big percentage of that group that could solve that with, it's just a dehydration causing you to right. feel differently, you know, and negatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and so I'm going to go drink some more water just on that, uh, <laughs> on that note. Um, after this, uh, uh, we're, uh, we've got some cool things on the success health front uh, that we're going to be rolling out here in the next few weeks as well, uh, which um, is all just geared around getting data and using that data to make um, decisions on how to just improve things in your life. So whether they be wearables, whether they be internal, uh, whether they be, you know, diet and exercise, just all of those things. Bring it I, got all together. I got an aura ring. Yeah, so I've got the aura ring here, and right now I'm trying out the Whoop bracelet here. And of course, oh yeah, I, I heard the, about the Whoop. I got the Apple Watch, and then I've also got over here. I've got a Levels um, continuous glucose monitor. So I'm monitoring like everything I can at the moment. Uh, is my the, glu is the my glucose thing. the glucose monitor? That's that sugar. That's like if you're eating too much sugar, kind of spike yeah. shows you a spike. It shows you, it shows your spike, shows your, you know, just your general trend. I, uh, I was at an event two or three weeks ago and actually it's where I got the, 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 uh, the continuous glucose monitor and they were serving as dinner late at night around seven, seven thirty at night. And which I normally don't, I normally eat earlier in the day and, um, I've got this and I was like in a range that I wasn't actually super excited about from a blood glucose level. And then I got, I left there and got back into more of my intermittent fasting routine and some of the other stuff. And finally I've got it back into the, to the, to the normal range, but it, it, mm. it took some work, took some work to sort of get back to, you know, between um, the 70 and a hundred, which is considered to be sort of that normal range. But I was like 110, 115 and I'm going, I'm pre-diabetic. And I'm like, I'm, there's no freaking way I'm pre-diabetic. So, but it's nice to have the data to understand mm what affects your blood sugars and what can sort of push you in one direction or another. I saw Mr. Wonderful had something like that. It was some kind of glucose tracker. It was on his wrist, I think, but I'm, I'm going to get one of those because I'm going to keep start keeping track of that as well. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's fun to gamify and then see what foods and everything else that can, can affect stuff. So, well, uh, last question back on, on the real estate front. So um, obviously you built a, a big business. Uh, your, your dad's now, um, you know, helping run the, the real estate business. Do you, how do you manage lead gen and, and do, do you have a particular CRM strategy or, or CRM that you use? I'll show you my CRM. It's real complicated, uh, um, you know, piece of software. I never really had a CRM. Um, I always just use notebook, honestly. And it's kind of wild to hear telling, a, you know, the tech, you know, Mr. Tech that, you know, founded EXP that he's a notebook, but um, always did. Um, so I, I really just focus on, um, the, the I always have a lit here's, here's the, been the secret equation to me for closing how many ever deals I want to close. If I have 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers at one time who are, who are thinking about doing something with me, I'm going to close one a week. If I have 25 plus, then I'm going to close two a week. And I did that for, you know, that's a hundred deals a year. So I did that for eight years straight. I always kept a list of 25 to 30. Uh, active buyers and sellers. If I ever got below that, I would just ramp up uh, prospecting to make sure I'm always hitting that number. I would take people off the list that needed to ghosted me or move forward or bought through another agent. I would take them off. So I'm really maintaining the real number. But that that I've I've have so many agents that you that go by that and they'll close either if they want to close one a week, they have 15 to 20. If they want to ramp it up to two a week, they need 25. Plus, so I, I always kept that on a Google sheet and, and within my notebook. And that's all I needed because I only needed my 25. Otherwise, anybody I talked to that I made a great first impression with that, um, 
you know, gave me their contact information. I throw them in. I, I, I use constant contacts to send a weekly email every Wednesday. So that's one out every Wednesday since 2007 is literally the foundation. It's the reason why I was able to close 100 deals a year because no one ever forgets who I am. You know, it's such a high organic reach um, compared to social media. Of course, you want to you want to stack social media on top of the weekly email. But, you know, between the weekly email and I even like it better than text, honestly, because text is still that intimate place where, you know, when you get spam or business text there, it's still kind of awkward. You know, um, I still like email with the right branding and the right the right way, of course, and, and creating original content, you know. But um, now through through this changing market, which I mean, everyone it was very telegraphed. The market could couldn't be that hot for long at all. I mean, prices can't go up that much that quick for you know years and years and years. Um, and honestly, the uh, w with you know interest rates and and everything else, I've been telling everybody this for years. Closings are not going to stop. We're going to have 4.8 million transactions this year, down 20%. But we had 4 million in 2008. We're still 800,000 proper, you know, closings higher. When you multiply that times two, we're at 10 million, <laughs> 10 million, 5 million sellers, 5 million buyers. It's amazing how many transactions uh, are happening right now, even with interest rates coming up. And if you're on the side of the glass half, you know, half empty, 20% empty versus 80% full. You know, me, the agents that were complaining about no inventory last year, right? Now they're complaining about too much inventory this year, right? Yeah. The, the complainers are just going to keep complaining. The winners are going to keep winning because they know it's a, it's a people game. And they're going to maintain that list of the, the amount of people that might buy or sell through them in the next six months. And they're going to continue closing deals no matter what. Awesome. Well, this has been this is this is great, and uh, I know we could spend more more time uh, on this. And I, I'm uh, I, I want to I, uh, be respectful of your time. I also want to uh, make sure that uh, we uh, leave enough time for for what we have all got for the rest of the day. But uh, Ricky, thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, uh, and then, uh, where can people find you? I, I know there's a lot of places, but where 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 would be a couple places? I think the best place is, is Instagram, honestly, Ricky Carew. Okay. And that, that link goes everywhere to the coaching, to the YouTube, to the, you know, everywhere else. I answer all my Instagram messages every day. It's a, that's probably the best place. Okay. Awesome. Well, Instagram it is. Uh, I, and if I'm not following you there, I will be following you there shortly. And uh, thanks again for being on here. And thanks everyone for listening uh, and, uh, and watching. Cause I think we're also, have a YouTube stream that we're building out with some of these as well. So uh, thanks again. And until uh, next time, uh, make it a great day. Talk to you soon.